In the first video, we saw that the word Bible originally was plural, which meant that there were multiple books within the Bible. And in this video, I'm going to discuss the three major divisions of the Bible, the three categories of books that can be found within the Bible. And there is first the Old Testament, secondly there is the New Testament, and finally there are the Apocrypha. The first thing you may want to know about the Old Testament is that not everybody calls it Old Testament. Maybe this is out of sympathy for Jewish people, or maybe for another reason, I don't know. But the thing you may want to know is that some people would call this the Hebrew Bible, others would call this Tanakh or Tanakh, maybe slightly depending on how you spell it and how you want to pronounce it, and the New Testament then would be called the Christian Writings. Other people would call the Old Testament the First Testament and the New Testament the Second Testament. Personally, I may pre prefer to call the Old Testament Old Testament and the New Testament the Young Testament, but that's just my own little joke. The Old Testament is mainly written in Ancient Hebrew and a little bit in Aramaic. It is universally accepted as the Holy Writings by both Jews and Christians worldwide. The New Testament, on the other hand, was written in Greek. And it was also written after Jesus walked this planet. And it could be argued that the New Testament is actually all about Jesus. The New Testament is universally accepted among all Christian groups, but not by Jews. Unless, of course, you count the Jews that are also Christians. And finally, we come to the last group, namely the Apocrypha. And this may be the most intriguing and also most complicated group of writings. Apocrypha are only accepted by Christians, but only some Christians, and which Apocrypha are accepted and which are rejected is different for each church. I myself come from a Protestant background, so that's where I will start, and it's actually the easiest group. They accept none. The next group we're going to look at are the Roman Catholics, the Anglicans, and the Orthodox churches. These churches include the so-called Deuterocanonical books, and Deuterocanonical is well, I think I can best translate it as of secondary authority. And the Deuterocanonical books are actually a subset of all the available Apocrypha. And these books are Tobit, Judith, 1st and 2nd Maccabees, Wisdom of Solomon, The Wisdom of Jesus Ben Sirach, and in order not to confuse them too much, usually the first one is called Wisdom and the second one is called Sirach, or Jesus Ben Sirach, and the Ben part here, here you see Ben, Ben that means son of. So it's about the wisdom of Jesus, the son of Sirach. Although calling it the wisdom of Sirach may be more accurate because it's his son Jesus that translated the Hebrew original into Greek. And finally we have Baruch and the additions to Esther and Daniel. And finally there are several Orthodox churches that include even more Apocrypha. For example the Greek and Russian Orthodox churches, you have a map over here, you see Greece, where the Greek Orthodox Church is founded, but it also has a lot of influence on the Balkan and in Turkey, and Russia over there. Also, there is the group of Oriental Orthodox churches, these include the Georgian Church, that includes a subset of Apocryphi over there, the Syriac or Syrian Orthodox Church, which includes another collection of Apocryphi, and Finally, we have the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, that's Ethiopia. I'm not very well informed on how much international influence each of these churches has, but it's interesting to note that they have a different collection anyway, and I've put a link in the, in the descriptions below to Wikipedia, which tells you probably a bit more about which individual books are included, and if you click on and on, I'm sure you'll find more interesting information. With my Protestant background, I of course know most about the Old Testament and the New Testament, but that doesn't mean I will totally ignore all the Deuterocanonical and Apocryphal books. And the very least thing I can say about the Deuterocanonical books is that they are very good to read. I know a little bit less about the sometimes a little bit obscure books that are included by the Orthodox churches, but I would say that at the very least they are interesting, and I will advise each and every one of you to read them if you ever get the chance. Hopefully you found that a bit interesting, and I'll see you in the next video.